Hello everyone. I hope we are live successfully. Please just confirm that uh, that I'm audible and visible to you, and there is not much lag. Okay. So please comment that in the chats. And I, Devashish Khare, associate mentor here at Geeks for Geeks, welcome you all to another very fruitful and exciting session of this Geek Week. We're going to discuss a little more about what is going to be happening in this Geek Week. And uh, just okay. So one thing I would uh, want to tell you about this session. Well, this session in particular is about uh, solving up a problem and approaching a problem. So it'd be taking up a very exciting problem of DSA. And we are going to be coding it live. We are going to be solving and we are going to be seeing the approach for that. And uh, I would want the, I would want the chat to be very, uh, you know, interactive with me. And I'd be able to see your comments here as well. And uh, so make sure once we are there once we are uh, into the question once we are discussing the logic you guys are there with me and we are discussing it together okay and you can just come into the charts and confirm that i'm completely audible and there is uh there is no lag okay hello hello rohit hello rohit Okay, thank you, thank you, Sagarika, for telling me. Okay. So first of all, let me tell you a little about what is happening. Why are we live? What is this session all about? Well, this is a geek week that is going on, and this geek week is full of this you know, like all these YouTube sessions that you are going to have from industry experts and from YouTubers as well. And uh, the event, the main event, is actually. Uh, actually, we'll be starting from 14th and it will be lasting till 21st of October. So make sure you just keep a check on that, what is going on. But you're ready for Geek Week only. We have launched one separate course for this Geek Week, which is completely free. And it has uh, its own uh, course page. You can uh, get that uh, link from the description. We have mentioned it there. You can go there. You can subscribe that. You can enroll to that course. And... Uh, during the main time, during the high point from 14 to 21st, if you are following that uh, course uh, completely and you're not missing up the courses, we do have contests happening there. We do have uh, practice sessions happening there. And what you need to do uh, there is, as you already know, if you know, if you have taken any course in, uh, course for, in Geeks for Geeks, you know how the contests work, right? You get some ranks there. And I will you know i'll be telling you what will be happening if you attain good ranks so if you are there enrolled in this course and you are achieving high ranks so it is not just the rank it is not just the numbers that you can show up like along with it you are going to be having cash rewards that we will provide you and course vouchers as well so make sure everything that is is coming here is going to be full of knowledge it's going to be full of exciting events okay do not miss any of those and eventually perform really well in the contest which is going to be related to the sessions and win cash rewards and cash vouchers okay so discussed about the geek week that is happening now we will be moving ahead to the agenda of the session which is taking up a really exciting dsa problem and solving it okay so give me a minute let me just uh, show that problem to you give me a second guys Okay, so whosoever is joined uh, just now and is wondering what is happening, 
where we are uh, i'm just uh, yeah, so i'm just about to show one problem to you guys which we will be discussing in this uh, complete session okay so i'm just presenting it give me a second okay Once the problem is visible to you, please uh, give me a plus one in the chats. Give me the plus one in the chats if the problem is visible to you. Is it? Is the problem visible? Anyone? Yeah. Okay. That is visible. Thanks. Let's read the problem, okay? The problem is really exciting. Let's read it. The name of the problem is the cricket field skill okay so once upon a time in a small village there was a young and ambitious cricketer named alex he dreamt of becoming a cricket superstar and his journey led him to an old mysterious cricket field okay and this cricket field was unlike any other it has it had a unique layout with n rows and m columns all right and was rumored to be enchanted the field was his ultimate destination and he stood at the starting point which is 0 comma 0 all right uh, the field was divided into cells and each cells had its own story some cells were free represented by zero some had obstacles which were represented by one and some were special represented by two the special cell had uh, a magical property if Alex stepped into a special cell. He could pass through any adjacent cells containing obstacles. Okay. Alex's goal was clear. Reach the far end of the field, which was at the point N minus 1 and M minus 1. Okay. But with the obstacle blocking his path, he had to navigate the field carefully. Fine. And what is our task? Our task is to help Alex find the minimum number of his steps to reach the enchanted destination on this cricket field. It's uh, if it's not impossible, like if it is impossible due to any uh, any impassable obstacle, then we have to return minus one. Okay, uh, so we have to you know try a level best to help Alex and give him uh, the minimum number of his steps which is required to get to his destination. And talking about the example, well, I think uh, we'll be better able to solve it here. Just give me a second. Let me switch my screen. Okay, um, is my notepad window visible to everyone? Just acknowledge that, please, in the chats. Thanks, Zafar, for telling me. Um, yeah, the window is there. So now let's discuss what actually the question is. Okay, now let's try to understand what actually the question is. Let's first see the parameters that we are given according to this input. We are having two values, n and m, which are actually the dimensions of the field, the cricket field that uh, Alex, had, uh, Alex has reached. This is the dimension of that field. So let's draw the field uh, where the question states that the field is in the form of n cross m. For us, we have n to be 2 and m to be Three. That means two rows and three columns. Let's make that. Okay. So we can say that this is our field, right? Now, what are the values that are filled inside the field? We are said, we are said that we have three values. It could be either zero, two, or one. What do we mean by zero? Well, zero tells that it's 
three parts. Okay, we can move along with it. One tells that it is blocked. Okay, and two, we'll see through the diagram. Okay, let me just erase it. Yeah. Now, first, uh, let's see what are all the possible paths. Let me denote them with uh, this blue pen. Okay, these are all the possible paths which, uh, with, uh, with no obstacles. You can freely move in them. Then what are the blocked paths? Let me represent that with red. Okay, these are the blocked paths. Now, here comes the, just give me a second, the path which has special powers. Okay, this is two and this path have special powers. What powers does it have? what powers does it have so once you step into this column once you step into uh, this cell what will happen all of its neighbors okay when i'm talking about neighbor what neighbor do i mean if we are standing in one cell if we are standing here let's say if we are standing here at this cell it has four neighbors according to the question it has four neighbors what are the four neighbors this cell which is just uh, you know above it this cell which is just below it and towards the right and towards the left. These are the four neighbors we are talking about. Okay. So once we are stepping in and we have stepped into this, uh, this cell, which is having special powers, what does this power do? Even if these uh, parts or you can say these cells are blocked. Okay. You could not have moved in usual situation because this has a special powers. What it will do is it will convert these paths into traversable paths. That means you can access these paths next. Okay. So this is the special power of two. And uh, this is the question. And what do we have to do with it? Now we understand how the field is working. What is our task? Well, the, uh, well, if we talk about the indices, if you have to put it and see this uh, field in the form of a, uh, in the form of matrix, we can say that at zero comma zero, that means this cell, Alex is standing. Okay. Alex is standing at this particular cell. And where do we like where he wants to go? He wants to reach this destination cell, which is actually n comma one, uh, n minus one comma m minus one. Okay. Or we can say one comma two. Fine. This is the starting point. This is the ending point. Our task is to provide the minimum number of steps which are needed from here, like for going from here till here. So guys, have you understood the question? Tell me in the charts, have you understood the question? Plus one, uh, plus one in the charts if you have understood the question well. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm waiting for your responses. I hope the question is clear so we can start up with the approach. I hope the question is clear, guys. Yeah. All right, uh, let's repeat. Let's repeat. See, what happens is you have this matrix, you have this matrix that we have here okay just like that this is the starting point this is the starting point where alex is standing this is the ending point where alex wants to go okay what is our task our task is to count the minimum number of steps which uh, which alex may take to reach this position and what are the steps like what are we talking about how is alex going to travel alex can take one step at a time and in what directions? It could be up, down, left, or right. Okay. So assume Alex took this uh, step. So it is step number one. He took this step, step number two, and then he took this step, step number three. Correct. Similarly, if he, uh, if Alex does not want to go this, uh, like uh, for this way, where he can go apart from this, he can take this step one, two. Then he can again go up three. Then he can again go here. Four, then he can again go here five if if alex takes this path okay it is a little messy now let me clear it up if alex takes this path 
so you can see that the this path has five steps okay and the previous path that we chose had three steps so the main motive of this question is to give is to return is uh, is to return the minimum answer possible okay is to return the minimum number of steps possible thus three was the answer we have to build up the logic behind it how we are getting to the answer okay and uh, every cell has some property which we have already discussed right so i hope the question is clear now right so okay thanks vishal what about sakshi have you understood zafar i hope you have understood the problem now yeah okay let me just draw that again These are the block parts. This is the special part. All right, great. Now let's try to understand what we are going to do. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's talk about moving. Okay, moving inside a matrix. I hope you guys know that already, but let's for you know, for anyone who might have any confusion, let's clear that out. Okay. Assume you are having this matrix and you are here. Okay. You are here at this point. And it could uh, uh, it could be a smaller part of any bigger matrix. I'm going to tell you how you can travel your neighbors. How you can travel your neighbors. And uh, this time in this particular question, we're talking about four neighbors. Which are these four neighbors? Up, down, right and left. All right. Let me again mark the indices. Okay. So what are we actually doing? Let's say at the start, at the start that we are having, what is what is the coordinate? The coordinate that we have here is x comma y. Okay. The coordinate that we have here is x comma y. What will be the coordinates of this cell depending upon x comma y? Can anyone tell me in the charts? What will be the what will be the coordinates of that element that I've just marked depending upon x comma y? Any guesses? Any guesses? Guys? Nice. Okay, so let me tell you. What happens is if you have x comma y and it could be any value, it could be uh, it need not to be uh, you know part of the zero one two. I've just uh, marked it for reference, correct? So what happens is, what you are doing here, even if we remove these indices, if those might be confusing for you, if you are here, what are you actually doing? What are you actually doing? You are at x, y, and you're moving here. If you see clearly, you are actually reducing one row, correct? You are in the same column, but you are changing your row, and you are reducing one row, okay? So what is going to be the value? minus 1 comma 0 and by minus 1 comma 0 i mean x minus 1 comma z x or uh, y plus 0 okay nothing else okay so we are actually subtracting 1 from x which is our coordinate for row so we are reducing one row and we are remaining at the same column all right what will happen for this one tell me the coordinate for this one now you know for the first one tell me the coordinate for this one Correct, uh, Vishal, thanks for telling. That was the right answer. And what is going to be the answer for this next block? Charts? Would you like to tell? Yeah, thanks. Thanks again, Vishal. This time it is going to be 1, 0. Because what we are doing, we are doing x plus 1, comma y plus 0. Okay? I hope you guys are understanding this, right? Now, let's talk about the horizontal ones. What if we have to go to this block? We are moving one step towards right. That means we are changing up a column this time. And what we are doing with the column, we are increasing the value of column by one. So tell me the coordinates of this one. Tell me the coordinates of this one, please. Great. Now this time row is same, okay? Pay attention here. Row is same. That is why you are not going to add anything or subtract anything from the row. Thus, it's zero. And you have to add one. 
to y to the y coordinate because we are now increasing one column right so it is y plus one x plus zero this time now let's talk about the last one you guys are smart enough you guys have gotten the logic uh come on tell me the value of this one quickly tell me the value of this one guys correct correct now this time what we are doing is we are just working on the column we are reducing one column so zero it is going to be there it is going to remain constant and we are going to do minus one row is same column is changed by negative one okay so x plus zero comma y minus one all right i hope now everybody knows how they can travel to each and every neighbor all right uh one thing more for this particular question we will be following the bfs approach what is bfs approach it is breadth first search approach okay what do we do in that firstly assume if we are here if you are at a point and these are all the neighbors okay these are all the neighbors and these are next level of neighbors okay i'm just forming a rough diagram which may be which may be representing a graph okay all the circles that i'm drawing are actually nodes fine so what you can see if i have drawn this diagram and uh, i'm standing here at this point and i'm performing bfs how does bfs work you can tell me in the charts if you already know how does bfs work what you do is wherever you are standing wherever you are standing you will explore all the neighbors of it okay so if the name is a b c and d so what you have to do is you have to explore each and every neighbor of this yellow node so for this yellow node we have all these red neighbors correct so i'll be doing a b c and d correct i will explore this then this then this then this fine once we have, uh, we have explored these neighbors now one by one we are going to pick up the already explored neighbors these are our already explored neighbors one by one we are going to pick them firstly we have a we are going to pick up a now what do we what are we going to do with it we are going to explore all of a's neighbor now okay so this is explored this is explored and this is explored once all the neighbors of a are exhausted we'll go to b we will explore all the neighbors of b these neighbors exhausted going to c we will travel all the neighbors of c neighbors of c are exhausted done now the last value is d so now we are going to explore all the neighbors of d fine assume assume we might had more neighbors of let's say this branch okay then once we have explored every other possibility okay in the breadth first search manner then we would reach here and we would explore all of its neighbors as well fine how are we going we are going in this manner you can say if we are spreading if we are uh what you can say um traveling the graph we are going on in this manner we were at the center we explored all the neighbors then we explored neighbors neighbors okay just like this okay i hope you are getting the diagram it might be a little messy but it is just to clear up the concept you are going in the breadth first search manner you are increasing the breadth of your traversal okay so this is the approach that we will be taking up why there is a reason behind it we can also take dfs approach right what is dfs which is depth first search i'm not going to be discussing much about it because we will know we will not be using that approach in this video but what is the advantage of bfs over dfs well we are required to call, uh, to calculate minimum path right to calculate the minimum path for minimum well bfs by default actually calculates the minimum path because we are traveling in this manner assume this is your okay let me change the pen this is your starting point this is your ending point and you are traveling like this you have explored one level one step we have explored second level second step you have explored third level third step and you have explored fourth level fourth step and in the fourth level you reach it so you took only four steps right and those four steps were the necessary ones you could not have avoided any in dfs let's say in dfs if this is your starting point and this is your ending point you might have taken any path you might have been going like this okay and finally you would reach this so how many paths one two three four 
five, six maybe, right? So in DFS, DFS may result in, um, you know, in different longer paths, which we do not need in this particular question. We only need the smallest, or you can, uh, you can say, the path with the minimum steps. So we are we are going to discard DFS. It has its own pro, uh, own pros, but for this particular situation, our work will be done by BFS. Now let's see how we are going to implement BFS in our uh, in our example. Okay, let me copy this up. Okay, I hope everybody is uh, is able to understand so far. Correct. Everything is completely understandable. Right? Tell me in the chats. Fine. Coming here. Okay. If we see this example, if we see this example, then what do we have here? We are here at this node. You can say cell or node. Well, for matrix, we prefer cell. So let's say if we are at this starting cell, what are the neighbors that we can visit? What are the neighbors that we can visit? We can either go to this path or we can go to this path. Possibly because we check in four directions. What are the other two directions? The other two directions are this one and this one. But do we have anything here? No, right? We do not have anything here. So for that, we have to keep a check on it that when we are accessing some of the neighbors, those must be inside the boundary of our main matrix. Okay, we need to keep a check for that. If we are checking beyond it, it will result in some error because it will be, you know, uh, index accessing out of the bound. So we do not want to encounter out of the bound error. That is why we need to keep a check that whenever we are accessing some element that is present inside the matrix. Right? Okay. So for this particular cell, we only have two neighbors, which are those, which are those, these two, correct? We are going to be going to these two. Okay. How are we going to maintain a track that how much steps that we are taking? For that, I will suggest making one more matrix of the same dimensions. And what will it be containing? It will be containing for each and every cell that how many steps are needed, okay? Or better said, how many minimum steps are needed to reach that cell, okay? So let me fill out some value. Um, okay, at the beginning, we can fill all the values with some maximum value, okay? So that with the maximum value as per the, because for that, uh, we will be changing that whenever we encounter any smaller value, okay? Talking about this, Talking about this, we can uh, surely, you know, uh, place maximum value there. But we are already standing at that point. Okay, these are corresponding. Every every cell is corresponding. And of this matrix, of the yellow matrix, what we are going to do? We are going to at every point we are going to store an integer which will be telling us this is the minimum number of steps required for reaching this value uh, for reaching this cell. Okay, I hope everyone is understanding everything. At any point, if you, if you encounter any confusion, you can, you know, uh, just ping me in the chats. I'll take up the doubt. Okay. So once you are here, once you are here, you are already standing at 0, 0. So how many steps will you be taking? Can anyone guess? How many steps will you be taking? Correct. Right? You'll be taking 0 steps. So we will mark zero here that is by default we are not traveling anywhere we are just marking it zero okay now we'll check that yes this is one of the possible paths remember zero possible one obstacle two special powers what are the special powers we can travel to any of the neighbors or like any of the neighbors which is inside the boundary and the obstacles would open okay obstacles would open up so uh once we are having this too, let's uh, let's say we are exploring down, left, right. Uh, sorry, down, left, up, and right. In this way, we are exploring the neighbors. Okay. So first, we check down, right? 
here this is the possible uh, this is one of the possible paths because zero is written here we can make this move so we will make this move and once we make this move how many steps will we take how many steps will we be taking for uh, coming on to this one we will be taking one step right and we need to check that whatsoever the value is already present inside this corresponding uh, you know in this corresponding cell of yellow matrix should be bigger than uh, bigger than the existing value so existing step is one to reach let me change the color okay we are talking about this step that we are taking so we have taken one step currently we have to mark some value to this cell it has some maximum value the value that we are bringing is a smaller and what do we require minimum number so the value that we are bringing which is a smaller value we are going to replace it so the maximum value will be replaced by one here okay we have taken one step fine now okay at this direction left we cannot go not valid up we cannot go not valid right we can right we are moving here when we move here how many steps uh, is it going to take it is uh, it is again going to take one step so i'm going to write one here <coughs> correct fine all right you can tell me in the chat you can you know continuously uh ping if uh, you are understanding it or not so okay one level is done one level is explored now we have to explore neighbors of neighbor let's begin with this one let's begin with this one okay so what are the neighbors of this one well again we have four neighbors what are those neighbors down left up and right okay down we cannot go out of the boundary left we cannot go out of the boundary up we must not go because that is the place we are coming from right we have to maintain a track of the place that we have already visited so already visited we do not have to go there the only possible path is this right the only possible path is this right so once we go to right what will happen one okay one is actually the value that we are already taking we have we are already taken one step to reach at this point further from here we are going to be having one more step for that what will be the value for this one 1 plus 1 right 1 plus 1 is 2 and 2 is lesser than the maximum value okay so we are going to replace 2 with it correct so the new values look something like this so why 2 is in the cell is that the cost of travel or something vishal i uh, i believe that you might have missed the beginning of this uh, you know question part actually there are three values 0 1 2 Zero means free cell that you can move freely in. One means obstacle, and two means a special cell. Okay, what is the quality of a special cell? If you are standing on the special cell, and in, uh, like at the neighbors, you have one. That means obstacle. You can even go through the obstacles. That is the special power of two. Okay, I hope you understood, Vishal. I hope you have understood, Vishal. Okay. All right. Coming back here. now how much matrix that uh, how much matrix we have filled our main motive is to fill this yellow matrix because eventually this is going to give us the answer okay how much uh, values we have filled this one okay where we are traveling we are done with level 1 right we are done with level 1 we are going through level 2 level 2's this neighbor is done we have to move now to this neighbor we have to work up this neighbor again going for this neighbor let's solve how many uh, uh, you know how many neighbors does this cell have again 1 2 3 4 4 can we travel in this one can we travel in this one can we travel in this neighbor can we travel to this neighbor tell me in the charts i'm waiting i'm really uh, you know curious to know what you guys think can we travel here can we come on jacks be active no correct why because it is already traveled it is already visited we are going to maintain a record in our code for uh, visited cells this, this is already visited thus we are not going to go to this cell can we go to left can we go here can we go to the left cell again no why because this is also already traveled cell can we go up out of the bound cannot we cannot but we can go towards right we can go 
towards right correct so for right actually what do we have to do we have to take one more step correct again 1 plus 1 it is 2 2 is less than the maximum value 2 is less uh, 2 is less than the maximum value we will write 2 here okay we will write okay let me do it with yellow okay let me write 2 here so now level 2 of our traversal is done let me clean up the matrix a little okay let me clean up the matrix a little yeah so after two rounds what are the like what is the updated situation of this mat uh, of this matrix we have almost filled the yellow matrix right only one cell is left and that one cell is actually a destination once we find out the correct value of that cell that means once our bfs is done we have one uh you know perfect set value for that last cell that is going to be our actual answer okay we have to return that so how are we going to do that so how are we going to do that okay now let's see uh let me again go for level three for level three what are the neighbors we uh we have this cell and we have this cell and we have to travel the neighbors of these two correct for that what am i going to do i'm going to explore all the neighbors of this one first what are the neighbors of this one again we have four neighbors this one the and down left up and right correct down can we travel that tell me in the charts can we travel down we actually cannot why because it is out of the bound can we go left no why what is the reason it is already traveled can we go up no it is already traveled we can only move towards right because that is a newer cell that is a cell that we have not that we have not traveled yet right so what we are going to do here is we are going to travel this one and we have to calculate how many steps have we taken how many steps have we taken already so here just give me a second we have taken two steps already to reach this cell and we'll be taking one more step to reach this one two plus one it will be two plus one it will be three three is actually less than the maximum value it will be replaced okay so now we have a value here now we have a value here so is this the like a stopping point should we stop here we have reached uh, like we have reached destination we have got one point is this the stopping point could this be this uh, stopping point well this could be the smallest path this is the possibility but have we finished the traversal yet no the traversal is still left remember this node is still left and till we are not exhausting each and every neighbor there is a possibility that it can get us the minimum one okay it, it can get us the minimum value okay uh from here to for this particular situation what will be happening we are having two here and it cannot go left it cannot go up it cannot go right it will be only able to go down correct well it is already traveled but we are going to see that if we travel that if we travel this node with this particular value are we going to travel that in lesser steps two plus one again it will be three correct and three is already written there that means we need not to replace three but assume uh let me take a hypothetical situation not possible for this matrix but if at this point if i was having one okay and after taking this step one plus one after taking this step one plus one i'll be having two correct and two is actually smaller than this three two is actually smaller than this three if that situation would have occurred i would have replaced this okay i've already traveled that i'm not going to travel that again but i'm at least going to check that if it is having lesser value if we are calculating a lesser value for reaching that particular point we are having minimum steps i'm going to replace the value in the yellow matrix which is keeping a track of minimum steps count okay now i guess you will you might have a very clear understanding of this problem just tell me uh, in the charts so that you have understood the approach so that we can jump onto the code okay tell me in the comments that you have understood the approach and we'll be jumping on to the code all right tell me in the charts please Okay, thanks Abhishek, uh, you understood. Let's move to the coding window. 
just give me a second. All right. I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Okay, that is not the layout I would want. This one. Yeah. So I hope uh, you guys are able to see my screen now. I hope my screen is clearly visible to everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for telling. Thanks for telling. Okay. Let's start coding. Just give me a second, guys. Sorry for the disturbance. So let's start coding. Uh, first of all, uh, because you know we are implementing BFS. We are implementing BFS. The foremost thing that we need for BFS is a queue, or you can say uh, DQ in the case of Python that we'll be using for implementing. So I'll say from collections. I'll be importing import DQ. Okay. That's done. Now we have to start coding. Uh, see, guys, the very first thing that we do for BFS is to create up a queue. That is what we are going to do. And we have already, uh, you know, have our DQ for that. We already have a DQ for that. I've created one DQ. Okay, can you tell me at what position? Can you tell me at what position uh, our Alex is actually standing at? It is 0, 0, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to append append 0 comma 0 in the queue because that is where he's already standing so that place is already visited correct now because we need to create a yellow matrix remember the yellow matrix we uh, which was actually having your uh, uh, you can say minimum distances so let's create that uh, that matrix so i'm going to do distance equal and because firstly initially we have to uh, give the maximum values to those so a maximum possible value could be this for the question because none of the test cases would be uh, going beyond it. So what I'm going to do is for this this value m times for range range n. Okay, m and n are actually given. You already know that n is number of rows and m is number of columns. Well, this statement is actually list, uh, list comprehension, and this will be creating of a matrix, uh, the yellow matrix that we have seen, and every value will be having 10 to the power 9 as the initial value, because this is the maximum for, uh, for this particular case. All right. Now, OK, th that is clear. One of the things that we would be needing, some of the things that we would be needing, the utilities that we would be needing for going through this problem, one of the necessary things is our directions to travel. For that, what do we have? We have calculated the values. Let me have two directions. Uh, the first one will be D, uh, dx and the another will be dy. Okay. For dx, what are the values? Let me write it down. 1, comma, minus 1, comma, 0, comma, 0. And what are the corresponding y values? What are the corresponding y values? If we have to travel one row ahead and remaining at the same column, what will it be? 1, comma, that is what it is. 1, comma, 0. Okay. When we are going minus 1, one row be uh, like one row back and column constant, it is going to be like that. Now, again, row constant, we are, um, we are moving one column ahead. And uh, let's say, again, row constant, we are going one column back. Okay. I hope the directions are clear to you. Correct. Right? You can always tell me in the charts. Okay, now what do we have to do? We first have to let's uh, create up a function. Okay, let me create one internal function, which will be checking the validity. So I'll just say valid. Okay, and uh, that will be receiving my x comma y. And x comma y will be the coordinates that uh, I'll be using. And I'll return my x 
sorry. <clears throat> and this is to check that every x and y that is coming to me, it is actually inside the boundary of my matrix. So I'm just creating one function for that. Okay. And y is y. Fine. Well, this will return me either true or false, telling me that particular neighbor that we are trying to access is that inside the boundary or outside. Now let's start up the traversal that is going to be done using while loop while our Q is having some value while our Q is not empty. Okay, the very first, uh, the foremost thing is whatsoever is on the front of the Q, we have, to have, we have to pop it out. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to do it like this. I'll say X comma Y equals Q dot pop left. Okay, this will be giving me the value at the front. Okay, once that is done, what do I have to do next? I have to explore all of its neighbors. I have now got to the point that I'm standing at. Now I have to explore all the neighbors. How am I going to explore all the neighbors? I'll say for i in range, actually four. We do have to explore all the four neighbors all the time, correct? So this thing. Now what are going to be my new x comma new y? What are new x comma new y? The coordinates of possible neighbors. Okay, so what are going to be the values for that? The existing x that we are standing right now plus my dx, dx i. Okay, to get up this one comma zero. Okay, from dx and dy from uh, just to pick up those values. For y, we have y plus y plus dy and side dy. I. Okay, I hope you have understood this statement. And from this, we are getting. One by one, we are getting all the coordinates of the four neighbors. Fine. Once we are there, now we have to check that if if uh, the main, the name of the matrix is grid, if my grid x comma y, the place I'm standing at, if that is equal to equal to two, let's check for the case we are dealing with two. So with two, it is very simple. No matter, you do not even have to check the neighbors that you're going through like the neighbors you're going to are actually zero or one because two is special two has a special powers it can even go through the obstacles it is just reducing one if condition for us okay it is just reducing one if condition for us uh, we had to check that if the uh, neighbor that we are going to it is not it is not your uh, obstacle but two has a special power we need not to check that whether or not it is an obstacle we are going to go through it okay so what we will write here we will say if valid we do have to check the validity that's for sure okay for of the neighbors so neighbors are new x new y current the current uh, cell is x comma y so checking new x new y valid will return true or false if that is true then we are going to look uh to you know then we are uh, going to look to the yellow matrix the distance matrix if the value already existing at the point we are trying to figure out the value for is bigger uh, then we are going to change it to the smaller one. So how, how are we going to do that? We'll check distance, the distance matrix, new x. Okay. Sorry for that. Yeah. New x, new y. If that is greater than distance, which we are currently at, which we are currently at, plus one okay this is like this many steps we will be taking to reach the neighbor and, and the neighbor would be having already some steps uh you know if it is already traveled and if not it will be having the maximum value so whatsoever if that is bigger if that is bigger if the distance that we are uh, going to is actually bigger than what we are calculating only then we are going to be going inside this if and will be changing the value okay other than that we won't be so what I will write, I will write, I will write this. Okay, and what is going to be the new value? This one. Yeah. I hope you are understanding that. We have seen the illustration of everything. Now once this is done, once this is done, we do have to append this neighbor so that we know that it is actually traveled. Okay, so we are going to append that inside our queue. And it is going to be new x comma new y. Fine. That is done. Now 
this if condition is done when we are working with two. But we do have to see if we are encountering any other thing other than like any other thing than two. Then what is going to be the case? I have to write an else statement for it, right? And now inside else, what could be the two possibilities? Either it could be zero or one. Zero if you are traveling. We do have to check for one now. We do have to check for one. Zero can be traveled easily, but we have to check that the neighbor that we are going to is not one, because one cannot be traveled if we are if we do not have a special powers. So we'll write first of all the foremost thing is to check valid if uh, the new x comma new y if these are valid, then we have to check the other condition and the grid new x new y these are not equal to one okay that means these are not obstacles and we have to check the distance condition again if all these three conditions are met if all these three conditions are met only then we are going to be updating the distance and the queue okay only then we are going to be updating the distance and the queue so I hope you have understood the problem so far. Once we have done that, the whole traversal will happen. The whole traversal will happen. And what do we have to do? We have to check that have we reached the ending point or not? Because it is possible that we might not reach the ending point. That is a possibility and that is one of the corner cases. If you noticed it while we were reading the problem, it was mentioned that if you are unable to get to the final destination point, you have to turn minus one. So how are we going to check that? We are going to check it like this. I'll say distance minus one comma minus one python's negative indexing i'm reaching the ending point and i have to i'm checking that if it is not equal to this value this is the largest value that we stored correct so if this is equal to this largest value that means we have not reached that particular value if we would have reached we would have updated that so for that condition i'm going to write return minus one that we have not reached the answer we have not gotten the minimum number needed if this is not I'm going to return what? I'm going to return distance, the last node. OK, now let's try compiling this problem. OK, all right. So it is actually giving us one error. Let's see. It is actually uh, giving us minus one. Uh, let me check, have we missed anything? Have we missed anything? Okay. We are checking that. We are checking the validity. Yeah. We're checking the validity. <coughs> Correct. Okay. 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 That is being done. Okay. That is not getting updated. Why? Let me see that again. I hope I've made the matrix correctly. Uh, 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 uh. Try to figure out what the problem is. And also, the charts, it should be open. Case for visited one. Well, we will actually, you know, uh, we are going in one single direction. We won't be seeing the previous one. Okay. We, are, we won't be seeing the previous one. Okay. Let's see. Let's check. Let's check. Just a second. This will be last time to code that I already code right now. Okay. I've just coded this. So this is the same one. Okay. This is the same one. I coded it. I don't know what was the you know a small glitch that might be happening but i hope the logic is clear to you i hope the logic is clear to you is it vishal are you here the video has been long really long actually the session was not planned for this long okay so have you understood guys have you understood tell me that now let's run this problem let's compile it okay evaluation yeah it is working fine. It is working fine. The logic is perfect. It is working fine. The same logic is implemented. Let's submit that. And 
yes it is it is passing all test cases okay it is passing all the test cases fine so let me now stop the screen share okay there was like some little glitch or we could have had. okay what is Vishal saying sir can we only take one and one object because logically we have right and down only well this would not uh, affect the complexity drastically because you know uh, either you can take four steps or three or two everything is constant so if you are going to multiply it with your real complexity with four or uh, two if you talk about very big values it is going to remain the same so multiplying it with any constant won't make any sense okay so how was the session guys i hope it was good okay lastly uh, it, there was a little glitch and uh, once we tried the same code uh, again the same logic again uh, that worked fine it was passing all the test cases and i hope this problem was really interesting to you and uh, i hope you understood it well one more thing about the geek week don't forget to attend all these sessions that we are having it is just for like beginning from here the end date is going to be 21st october the high point of the week you know the high point of this geek week is going to be from 15th to 20, uh, 21 the course there is one particular course for geek week that we ha are having in our course page the link is mentioned in the description you should uh, go there click the link enroll in the course that is completely free attend all these sessions sessions like these which are happening daily okay by the end you have to give contests and once you give the contest you have you score good ranks the higher ranks will be getting cash rewards goodies and even uh, you know course vouchers all right so it was great being here well it was actually after so long that i've uh, done a youtube live so thank you uh, thank you guys thank you vishal thank you sakshi thank you everyone for being here it was really great you guys were you guys were you know uh, interactive throughout uh, and i respect that a lot and to all the viewers who might be watching it after the live uh, life has happened uh, I would request them to please comment down below if you like the approach, if you like the video, if you found it interesting. Uh, thank you, everyone. Let's conclude this session. All right. Thanks. Keep coding. Bye, guys. Take care.